Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, and a good night. I am Patrick. This is Storytelling Imperfectly, and welcome to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, I am Patrick. I hope you like what you see. I got a missing hunter story for you today, guys. It's weird, it's strange, baffling, and it's still unsolved to this day. Sit back, relax, it's story time, and let's see if we can't figure out what happened to Melvin Nadel. Melvin Nadel was a 61-year-old man from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Now, originally, he was from Brooklyn, New York, but he and his family had moved to Santa Fe back in the early 90s, and uh, he had a daughter named Kristen, whom he was very close with. In fact, they had homeschooled Kristen right up to the time she started going to community college, in which, at the time of his disappearance, she was a student at. His wife, Edna, and he had a wonderful relationship, and... Melvin himself, who went by Mel with his friends, was a uh, business owner. In Brooklyn, he was a jewelry store owner, but when he got to Santa Fe, um, he really got into fitness. And this is because Melvin's parents had died at a very early age. Now, there was a history of heart disease in his family. However, Melvin, according to his wife, had no health problems. At 61 years old, he had actually started a new business in Santa Fe, uh, and it was a fitness uh, studio where... He himself was the Pilates instructor. He also had a first-degree black belt in Taekwondo, so Melvin could take care of himself, to say the least. Uh, but Melvin wasn't a big man. He was around 5'2", weighed around 135 pounds. At the time of his disappearance, what happened was that he and two of his friends decided to go hunting, and they were bow hunting. And so they left Santa Fe and drove out toward Santa Fe National Park, uh, the Pecos Mountains, and Elk Mountain in particular. Uh, they set up camp, and they went hunting. Um, Melvin at the time had a knee injury, but it wasn't a horrible knee injury. It was just, he was a Pilates instructor, and he was 61 years old. So he had wrapped his knee up uh, to go on this trip, but it wasn't anything that would stop him from going. Um, however, Melvin had gotten lost in the woods once before, and so since that had happened, Melvin had taken a lot of care so that would never happen again. Now normally he went, when he went hunting or went out into the woods, he would go with a GPS locator, uh, well provisioned, and all the things that he needed to survive. In fact, upon his disappearance on April the 21st of 1988, Melvin had a camouflage turtleneck on, a shirt under it, long pants. Now this is April in New Mexico, and so the weather is not horrible. Now, it does get cold at night, and it can be certainly cold in the mornings, but generally during the day at this point in time, it's still warm and pleasant out. The last time Melvin was seen, he was in camp with his friends, and he told them that he was going to go about uh, 50 yards to 150 yards down a well-maintained trail, and the way Melvin liked to hunt was that he would set up a blind, which is basically a hidey hole. Uh, it was on the ground. It wasn't up in a tree or anything like that. Again, Melvin had a bad knee at the time. And also, Melvin didn't like to lo walk long distances or, uh, since he got lost in the woods, uh, stray too far from his camp. So, uh, and since he was bow hunting, there's not really a chance of him shooting a uh, wrong direction, hitting one of his hunting companions. So, 50 yards to 150 yards is actually a fairly safe distance for Melvin to go and set up a blind and then proceed to lie and wait for animals to come by. Now, it was late in the afternoon when Melvin left camp, and he told his friends, I'll be back. But Melvin sadly never returned. I mean, we do know that he was there, because what happened when Melvin disappeared is that it set off a tremendous search. His family notified the local authorities, the state police came in, um, they brought in canine units, they brought in horseback units, they brought in uh, search and rescue, SAR. Uh, all these teams went searching for Melvin, and unfortunately, no sign of Melvin was ever found. The weird thing about this is, is that the canine units actually did pick up Melvin's scent, of course, in camp, and then started following his trail down the trail that he said he was going down. The dogs followed his trail up to 50 yards, exactly like Melvin said he was going to do. The, the path, the scent, was all there. It made sense. Melvin went 50 yards down this trail. But at 50 yards, the dogs lost the scent and never could pick it back up again. They looked. 
It's not like they didn't search the area. In fact, they spread out in a tremendous er effort trying to find Melvin in, in an area far greater than what Melvin said he was going to go. But the dogs themselves never could pick up Melvin's scent again. He was carrying with him when he left camp. Not only was he carrying his bow, since he was bow hunting, but he was also carrying a 44 caliber pistol. Now, this was, of course, a case he came across a large predator. There are uh, mountain lions in the area and things of that nature. So, carrying a 44 caliber pistol will take care of a bear, much less a mountain lion. And that was never found. Melvin also had a uh, chain that he wore around his neck that had a lucky number 13 pendant on it that he had had made custom for him when he was a jewelry store owner back in Brooklyn, New York. And, of course, it was never found. In fact, nothing of Melvin's was ever found. No clothing, his bow, his firearm, absolutely nothing. Now, the things that get me about this case, guys, is that not only was Melvin uh, in very good shape for a man his age, which is 61 years old, uh, but the fact that he's a black belt, you know, in Taekwondo. It's not like Melvin couldn't defend himself. And even though he was a smaller man at 5'2 and 135 pounds, I wouldn't go grab a squirrel by the tail because you're not going to like what happens to you after that. Uh, the, also, the biggest thing is that his scent just vanished. It's like Melvin literally vanished into thin air. It's the dogs followed his scent 50 yards down a path, and suddenly it's gone. Uh, Melvin's wife was interviewed uh, about uh, his condition, his health, and everything else. And again, Melvin's wife stated that he had no health conditions other than his knee that had been bothering him due to running Pilates class, which are intense. I mean, you, you, you guys that work out and go to Pilates, you know this. So at 61 years old, he was feeling a little discomfort in his knee, but he wrapped it and he took care of it. They asked his wife that if Melvin happened to shoot an elk with a bow and didn't get a kill shot and the elk ran off, would Melvin then track the elk into the wilderness? And she unequivocally said, absolutely not. Um, not with a bad knee particularly, but also due to the fact that Melvin had become lost in the woods once before, um, he would not do that. He liked to stay on the trail. It was a very traumatic experience for Melvin to be lost in the woods that time, and so he learned a valuable lesson, so he stayed close to camp. So there was no chance of Melvin just wandering off. And this is also why he chose the particular method of hunting that he did by building blinds and lying in wait for the animal. Because when you're bow hunting, particularly, you have to be quite stealthy. I mean, you have to get within a very short distance of your prey to be able to shoot it with a bow. It's not like rifle hunting where it can be 200, 300 yards away and you get a good shot in. Uh, you have a scope and all this. So um, there are a lot of questions that are unanswered with this case. So what do you think happened, guys? I mean, I don't know. Did Melvin... Uh, but get run afoul of? Did, did Melvin happen to stumble across something that he shouldn't? Uh, it, but here's the thing. If Melvin was attacked by a mountain lion, there would have been a kill site. There would have been a struggle site, a, a death site. You know, the, the fact that Melvin uh, would have at least had an opportunity to thrash about, even if the mountain lion had grabbed him by his neck instantly, um, by launching an ambush attack, there still would have been a slight struggle. There certainly would have been blood because mountain lions sink their claws into people. They grab for the throat. There was no blood found. There was no sign of struggle ever found. Also, the fact that Melvin's bow would have been dropped. You know, there, there would have been signs of this, and none of that was ever found. The other idea is that maybe somebody stumbled upon Melvin, that maybe he had stumbled accidentally on a drug operation of some kind. I mean, I don't know, but these are ideas that pop into my head. But it also seems, again, that if you uh, surprise Melvin, he had a 44 caliber pistol on him. No shots were ever fired. You know, you would have to be, what, a ninja to sneak up on a man who is already in stealth mode himself, sitting in a blind camouflage, to get the jump on him, and then not to make a single sound. I mean, 50 yards away from a camp is not that far. It seems to me that his friends would have heard a struggle, or they would have heard some sort of ruckus, and that was never reported or didn't happen. And then, of course, like I said, his the fact that his equipment was never found. Nothing of Melvin was ever found again. It truly is as if Melvin just vanished. 
So I don't know what happened to Melvin, but I tell you what, guys, I would love to hear what you think happened to Melvin. So leave me something in the comment section below. All in all, a baffling case. Unfortunately, it's been open since 1988. Melvin would be close to almost 80 years old now if he was still alive. It, it, my heart always goes out to the families of these missing person cases because they just have no closure. Uh, about a year after Melvin disappeared, his family did have him legally declared dead through the court system. Uh, it wasn't the end of the search. I mean, the state police searched for Melvin for six days, but his family searched for six months with friends and local volunteers. And it, it just baffles me that no trace of Melvin has ever been found. But I'd love to hear again what you guys have to say about it, so do leave me something in the comment section below. But that's it for Patrick today, guys. That's all I got. I'd like to apologize for only uploading once a month, but again, I am working 10 plus hours a day, Monday through Friday. I'm also going to school full time in the evening, so I don't get home until well after 10 o'clock at night. And I am burning the candle at both ends. But I am trying to upload at least once a month. And uh, there'll be more to come, I promise. I'm not done with YouTube by a long stretch. I'm just busy. But thanks for sticking with me, those that are and have been. And thank you to all the new subscribers that are joining the channel. I hope you'll keep coming back and watching. And if you like this video, by all means, smash in that thumbs up button. Turn it blue for me. It helps me out and lets me know you're enjoying the content. If you are new to the channel, you've been here this long, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Keep coming back and hanging out with me when I upload. And last but not least, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you a thousand times for your support. But again, that's it for Patrick. Guys, I am out of here, and I will see you guys in the next video.